Welcome back to the channel. My name is T Cypher and today we'll continue the design of a Simpit panel for the A8B Harrier, specifically the fuel panel seen here. In this uh, video we're going to be looking at the creation of the acrylic plates and the uh, cutouts for the actual switches. We'll be doing both an upper and a lower plate along with text onto those plates. I'm going to be breaking my panels into two halves which will be joined together at a later stage. So the sources we'll be making use of today We'll be making look, use of our collection of photos we've uh, procured, along with a new mill standard which we haven't seen before. This mill standard is mill standard mill M 18012B. I will try and uh, put a link to the file in the description below. So we are moving now to creation of the actual cutouts and the text for the actual panel itself. So where did we get to last time? Switching to Fusion 360. This is where we got to last time. We had created a the basic layout for the upper panel and this is the actual file I shared with you and the links to those files can be seen in the description below. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually alter this part slightly by selecting here and clicking, clicking Edit Extrusion and I'm going to simply deselect the parts of the profile I do not want. Okay, that now gets us into the basic form that we can see in our pictures. So, continuing. What I've actually done, I've cheated already, I've gone into the, this model in advance and I've actually laid out the location, the points of where the cutouts are centered on the metal plate in reference to this uh, acrylic plate. This is so that when I assemble the two parts together it will match up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a series of circles. Okay. And again if you wanted to you could just simply use a pattern feature uh, to do this. And I'm going to make them all equal size. So at the moment I'm working on the lower plate. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that the uh, the lower plate can actually house the uh, switch that's going to be attached to attach the other base plate. Now this has got a retaining nut that I've got here and I've measured with my Fernier calipers and I've determined that for this to fit over the nut and not interfere I need a diameter of 17 millimeters. And again you can see now the advantage of making using a constraint to the power of it in that I've only had to dimension this once. Okay, and then for this panel part, I'm going to click Finish Panel, and now I'm just going to do an extrude feature, and I'm going to select the holes in question. So I think if I just go like this, it will select what I want, and I want it to go through it all the way. Bang. Okay, and then I'm going to save it. And this is the lower acrylic plate done. Now, you could choose just to do a single acrylic plate, uh, in which case you might well be able to see the nuts of your switches but you could well just stop here and then move on to doing the engraving at this point. I'm not, I'm gonna actually going to move on and create a second panel, okay, the top panel which is going to uh, hide the nuts away and also provide uh, the engraving features. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this, I've just made sure I've saved it, I'm going to just do a save as and I'm going to rename this uh, video uh, uh, fuel panel video acrylic plate top okay so what I'm going to do so next I got to do is alter this um, uh, sketch we just made it a moment ago and now I'm going to reduce this to 12 millimeters so this now will mean that when these parts are sandwiched together it will hide the nut underneath but will still provide the cutout required for the um, switch itself. So if I click finish sketch there we have our cutouts in place for this particular panel part. Next I'm going to create a new sketch. Okay so if we look at our pictures we can see that there's white sections of text and lines and such like. Uh, there are this is where the illuminated features come through. So if I go back into the actual Fusion uh, 360, 
I'm going to now create these. So what I'm going to do, and I, I'm not going to create everything in sight because uh, hopefully by now you've got a good clue of what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the rings, the outer rings. Now I've determined there's about one and a half millimeters from the uh, ins uh, uh, inside of the hole to the point where the ring is, and I've determined it's about a millimeter in thickness. Okay, and now I'm going to just do one more just to repeat the process. Again, just show you the power of constraints. So I'm not going to repeat it for all six of these holes because, to put it simply, you've seen it already, and there's not any additional value to repeating myself. Okay, so there we have our two rings. Of course, there'll be rings around all of these. So, looking back here, also at this stage, I'm going to go back and edit the sketch, and then bringing up the pictures, we can see that above this particular label, up this one here, is the fuel panel, the rule on top left, Fusion 360. So now we're going to add the text. Okay, so that's done by create text, and you select your point. Okay. Now, first thing I'm going to select is the font. Okay, so the font I'm going to use is not a standard font you'll find in your software. Uh, I've actually managed to download it off or on the internet. There's actually a list of four recommended fonts to be found in the mill spec, and what I've got is the font somewhere down here. It begins with a U. Here we go. Uh, URW Gordon condensed. It's actually Gordon condensed. That's what we're looking for. So now what I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you something. So with Gordon condensed text file, you can use capitals, and you'll notice it's upside down. So what I'm going to do is change this by 180, and you can use lowercase. Now I've decided that I prefer the ratio of line thickness to height. For the lowercase to the uppercase, so that's what I'm going to make use of for this particular one. So, what actually goes here is go back to the pictures because I've forgotten fuel prop. Okay, so there we have it. Now, the text in this program is a bit funny, you can't put end to unfortunately, so you have to do each individual line individually. And also, if this text box gets changed in that manner, it gets bigger. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a dimension, uh, and I'm going to set the height here. Okay, so I'm going to set a height of, uh, I think, 12.5 is what I decided I want to go with for this for the moment. Let me just double check. Yes, actually, I'm going to go with 14, and I'll explain why in a second. Okay, so that has set that. Now, why that dimension? For that, I'm going to go back to my PDF where we looked at the uh, mil spec. Okay, so the mil spec here shows us the information about these, uh, what size these should be. Okay, so the height of the of critical letters and numbers shall be between 0.15 and 0.3 uh, except those critical markings where positions of its variables shall be no less than 0.2. Okay, so I'm what I'm going to do, I, th 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 those dimensions work out as 0.15 works out as uh, 3.81 millimeters and 0.3 is 7.62 and 0.2 is 5.08. Um, I will say this is the dimensions I'm going to use. I'm not going to say these are perfect. I'm not going to say these are correct. But I know that if we go, I type in 14 here, this lower case is literally half of it. So this would be about uh, 7 millimeters high for the larger text. And sorry, going back here. I, I know that I've put, made it 14 high. I know that the because I'm lower case, it's made the uh, text itself about 7 millimeters in height. And if I was to use this tool here, Go in a bit. I could actually draw a line, and you can see that's coming out at 6.6, .6, which is roughly where I want to be. Okay. You can choose your own text size. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use move that out to there. There's a good reason for that, and I'll show you that now. And I'll go into this in a lot more detail in a bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a line downwards, 
and I'm going to make it a construction line because I feel like it. And I didn't select it to make it a construction line, so I'll try it again. Construction line. And I'm going to make this line be parallel, uh, coincidence with that. And right. Okay. And what I can do now is I can use symmetrical to make it symmetry around that. Okay, you notice how the box has is now symmetry around there, but the text isn't, so I'm going to open it up. And I think there's something wrong there. Let me just check. Ah, okay. I've got an error that I need to correct in my later one. But I've shown you the principle of how I'm aligning that. Aligning that. I can then use a dimension to dimension the height here. Okay, and change that height to whatever. Okay. Now, um, for smaller text, and what I would suggest you do is actually use Control C, Control V, copy the pass because it saves you having to mess around with uh, a, a lot of uh, messing around with changing the font back to this this uh, Gordon's fault. So for the smaller text, I want to go for a 12 millimeter height, and that provides roughly the right height. And then I can use measurements and stuff to locate it. And the final thing I could of course do is create a um, extrusion into the material but I'm not good at that because to put it bluntly I've cheated and I've got there already because there's a lot of information to put in so this is what I've done before okay so we can see I've done the panel in place already don't quite know where that's not working in that case but hey ho so what we can see, we can see it all in place, and I'm just going to show you the steps I made, did to make this. And there's quite a lot of steps, that's why I didn't want to go through it all in video. So we can see I've created the two primary sizes. I've created uh, one at 12 and a half, sorry, that's for the larger text, and eight for the smaller text. So the eight, the smaller text is about eight millimeters high. The largest text is about six millimeters high. Okay, and by doing that, I've labeled me to set it up. And then what I've done, I've used an equal feature between the sides of each individual one to make it work. And then I've positioned it roughly where I want it. I've used construction lines to try and better understand where the line is in relation to the, t the parts. And again, cross-referencing back to my drawings and pictures. You will notice there's something strange going on uh, on the uh, real-life uh, Spanish Harrier one where it says would normally say norm wings does say something different on the top pretty sure it says wing on the bottom i'm trying to research what that actually says Fortunately, my tech uh, picture's too low a detail so back to fusion 360 and on the right hand side here i've used a dimension to evenly space them and made aligned them on the left again unfortunately because you can't use enter and do multiple lines in each text i've had to do it individually so here we are with the panel fully marked up ready to go and if I finish it I can come out and then what I've done I you can use um, you can do appearance stuff here and you can assign properties so I've basically done a property material for the entire thing then I've gone individually in and basically made these areas here white and that is my top panel complete so uh, that's going to be a pause for the videos for now uh, hopefully this has helped please feel free to ask questions in the uh, uh, box below uh, next video I will be doing actually I will do another video I'm going to look at backlighting a bit and uh, I'm going to go through the steps and thoughts and there's a couple of other features I want to put back into the model which again I will do a, a standalone video for that where it's going to be more of me talking through what I've done and why I've done it rather than going through a step by step. So I hope you've enjoyed this series of videos and I hope you found them useful. As I said before, please ask questions below. Uh, in the future, I hope to be able to produce some videos on me maybe creating some of the other plates and show you some of the design theories I went through for those. Uh, and I hope to also show you some footage of me actually machining these uh, plates in real life. So thank you very much for your time and I hope you've enjoyed and goodbye for now.